John chapter 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. Without, with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So friends, I believe that the most significant statement that Jesus had ever said while he was there hanging on the cross would be, it is finished. It is done. It is complete. You can't add, add anything or delete anything. The mission is accomplished. Amen. He was sent by God, God the Father, he being the only son, the beloved son, into the world because God so loved the world. God so loved you and me. We were perishing. We were hopeless. There was no hope at all. And God, because of his love for us, he sent his son. And the mission of the Lord, Jesus Christ, he said it when he said that, friends, God sent him to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. That was the vision of the Lord Jesus Christ. To seek and to save each one of us because we were lost. In John chapter 3, verse 17, this is how the Lord Jesus also explained it. He said, verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world, to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So when Jesus Christ came, he did not come to condemn. He did not come to condemn. He came to save each one of us. So friends, that was the work. The redemptive work of the Lord finished at the cross. And so it is finished, friends. We can't add anything to it. Well, the good news here is that he had done the work of saving us. But there is a better news. He did his part, we got to do our part. Amen. For each one of us, this is the better news. Because though we were condemned to die, though there was no hope, God sent his son that we may have life. That's why Jesus said that, well, the thief does not come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I, I have come that you might have life. Each one of us, we will have life. And then he said that this life is a full and abundant life. Amen. He said, I came to give you life. That's a good news for each one of us that, that we're perishing then. But thanks be to God, friends, he had given us this opportunity to be saved. Because again, we are told that as many as received him, he gave the right to become children of God. So friends, this is the new birth that we have. That's why we get to be born again. For Jesus said that unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes, we know that there is a kingdom of God. Yes, we know that we all want to go to where God is, heaven itself. But Jesus said that there is just one way. There is just one way. And that way is him. He said that there is no other way. For I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the, the life. But on that day, he said, you know, on that day, it will be a terrifying day too, friends, if we don't live this Christian life the way that he wants us to live. You know why? He said that on that day, men and women will call out on me, Lord, Lord. But on that day, I will tell them, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you Workers of iniquities. So friends, are we workers of iniquities? Well, the Lord said that, you know, who will enter heaven? Those that will do the will of my Father. And what is then an iniquity? Iniquity is doing our own way. Doing our own will. That's iniquity. So let's submit, friends, to the will of the Father. And the Father's will for us is to be saved. That's why last time we, are to, we, we were talking about this, that God is so patient that not 
that he doesn't want that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. We are given, given friends, that window of opportunity for us to be saved. And so do we have the Lord Jesus Christ with us? And that is the message of the cross. It's done. He did his job. Jesus did his job. It is finished. So I've done it. I've done it. And even in John chapter 17, verse 4, we are told here, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. So that was what Jesus was declaring on the cross. Say, it is done, it is finished. I've done it, Lord. You, you sent me here to accomplish a purpose, and that purpose is to save mankind through the death. Friends, he said, it is done. And so he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit, and he died. Friends, it was a terrible death. It was a terrible death. If you have watched the passion of the Christ, who would like to go through that kind of a death? It was a terrible death. I don't think that anyone of us would like to go through it. But that's what, that will happen, friends, to us if we don't have him. Because the penalty of sin is death. What kind of death? Well, it's a terrible death. The death that he, he died on the cross. That's why, you know, when, when uh, Jesus was talking about this thing, he was expressing his heart. Say that, you know, wake up, wake up. Wake up. There is a death that is coming, and who could endure? Who could endure? Friends, without the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no hope. But only the Lord can save us. Amen. He alone could save us. That's why it's uh, important that we celebrate not only once a year, but every day. Amen. We talked about this last time. Now that Jesus had done the work, we are told in Ephesians 2 verse 8, that it is by grace that you have been saved, not by works. It is a gift of God, so that you don't boast. And then, verse 10, we are told to, for you are God's workmanship to do good. Friends, he done the work of saving us. It is finished. We can't add anything to it. Because that was complete. It was his shed blood that was needed, friends, for us to be forgiven of our sins. Now that he had done his part, we had to do our part. Amen. As believers, friends, we had to do good. We had to do good. There is no other way. You know why? We confess that. You know, the Apostle Paul said that Galatians 2.20, we always confess that. What is Galatians 2.20 again? You can sing it. I have been crucified with Christ. Who is crucified? I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I that live, but Christ living in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So meaning, it's no longer I that live, but Christ living in me. So if Christ is living in me, then I do good every day. Amen. I do good every day. He said that I am the light of the world, that you should be the light of the world. Then we should be the light of the world every day. Not only on Sundays. Not only on Saturdays when we gather for Bible studies. No. Every day. Because that is a confession, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live. So it's a daily, friends, a daily struggle against sin because the sinful nature is so strong. But we have to put to death the sinful nature. And how can we do that? By living in Christ every day. By living in Christ every day. Friends, Jesus would, will not tell us to endure until the end. If he does not demand, friends, that we live like him every day, would it be easy? No, Jesus had to go through it. Persecution, he was threatened, and ultimately, he was put to death. It was not easy, life that he lived. And I believe, friends, that it's not an easy life that we live too. But if, it, if, it, but if Christ is with us, then we are told that, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. He did the work. So he strengthens us every day. 
There is no reason for us friends to yield and be a slave to sin and to go back to sin again. There is no reason for us to do that. If we are indeed in Christ, then we live that life that is in Christ every day, every moment of our lives. Friends, a lot of people, they use weakness of the flesh as a reason. But I am weak. The flesh is weak. The spirit, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. How do you overcome it? How do you confront the weakness of the flesh? Friends, how did Jesus respond to the weakness of the flesh? In fact, it was Jesus himself that said it. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because he could see in Peter and the rest the weakness of their flesh. He said, that, can you not pray even for one hour? Can you not pray? And then he said, pray that you may not fall into temptation. Prayer, friends, a daily prayer. Every time that sin would come, every time that we are tempted, pray that you may not fall into temptation. Yes, the Spirit is willing. I want to, but I am so weak. But he said that overcome the weakness of the flesh by your spirit. Praying always in the Spirit. Amen? That's why we are commanded, friends. So pray always. Pray without ceasing that we may not fall into temptations. So that the flesh will no longer be our master, but the spirit, because the flesh will decay. But again, friends, Jesus was able to overcome. He overcame it, and he overcame it for you and for me. Amen. That's the beauty, friends, of the cross. It's done. He did it. All we need to do now is to appropriate it for ourselves, benefit from it. Receive him as your Lord and as your Savior, and then live the life that he demands us to live. Amen. Holy and blameless life. Friends, I don't think that Jesus or God himself would be unreasonable. You know what he said? Be holy just as I am holy. Amen. And a lot of people say, how can I be holy? How can I be holy? But do you think that God is unreasonable when he said, he said that? Be holy, just as I am holy. Be perfect, just as I am perfect. Friends, he is not unreasonable. He knows that we can do it through Christ who is strengthens us. Amen. And that's the reason why Jesus had to come, to make us holy before God. We cannot stand before God on our own. We are so un unholy. We are so filthy. We are described as a filthy rug before the Lord. You know what a filthy rug is? It's filthy. <laughs> Amen. It's filthy. Smelly. You, just, you don't even want to touch it. And God looks at man like that. So dirty. You need healing? Why should I touch you? But it's through the Lord Jesus Christ, friends, that we are washed. It's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are washed clean. That's why he said that, yes, you can be filthy, but I will wash you as white as snow. Amen. And so today, receive that, friends. This is the truth. That only in Christ Jesus that we can be washed. That we can be washed clean. As clean as snow. As white as snow. Amen. And so, friends, this is the message of the cross. That it is done. Nothing can be added to it. He did, he did the work. But we had to reform ourselves. Don't go back, friends, to sin. Don't go back to sin. Well, if just plain reading, you know, sometimes we are so influenced by so many doctrines around. And be careful, friends, be careful about this. Warning. Sometimes you have issues about the gospel. Sometimes you have issues about the word. And our tendency in our days, very dangerous, friends, very dangerous days that we are living in. Our tendency is go to Mr. Google. We Google it. And then, oh, this is the same topic. This is the same question that I'm asking. And this is the answer. Be wary. Be on guard. You don't know who wrote that. Amen. You could be going into a website owned by so many cults. You could be going there, friends. I, could, I have seen it. 
People ask me questions, I say, oh, I Google it, I check it out. But who is the writer of this? Who is the author? Whose website is this? Friends, there are so many cults around, so many false prophets around. And they are doing the work, friends, and they are succeeding in the life of many because we blindly read and obey everything written there. Friends, the best thing to do, you have the Bible. Amen. This will set you free. This will set you free. Sometimes just plain reading, you don't even have to interpret it. Plain reading, the Lord will speak to you. Just like today, just to give you an example, Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Example, just read plainly. Don't forget all the comments of others. Just you and the Lord. It is said, Hebrews chapter 6, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the, the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. What's your understanding of that verse? Verses. So it's impossible. Friends, we are told, friends, that don't crucify again, Christ again. He was crucified once. Amen. Don't put him back to the cross again. Friends, you repent sincerely. Amen. Don't keep doing and doing it and then sending Christ again to the cross. Friends, it's impossible. We are told here to bring back. I want you to meditate on that. Amen. Just between you and the Lord. Receive a message. Forget what you have heard from others. Read it. And then do what is required. Amen. Let's live that holy life. Don't keep repeating and repeating and repeating the same sin again. We are told, friends, that if anyone is in Christ, he is a, a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Friends, look at your life. Are you still doing the same thing again and again, the things that you did in the past before you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ? If you are still doing it, then think twice. Think twice. Are you indeed born again? How come there was no change? How come you are still in that life? Friends, let us change. Amen. Let's pursue righteousness. Live in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in him. Trust in him. Amen. That is repentance, friends. Repentance is turning away from sin. 180 degrees. And turning to God. Amen. Unless you turn to God, you can repent. Without you turning to God, there is no repentance. Amen. Move away from sin. Turn to God. You know where the temptation is. Don't go that way again. Amen. That's why the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul said, if you think you're standing, think again. Lest you fall. That's why, friends, the life that we have to live, live by faith. Amen. Faith in the Son of God who loved, God, who loved us and gave himself for us. Let's stand up. Let's pray.